The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And it's another evening here in the X Zone. Welcome, everyone. I'm Rob McConnell coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to uh, send us an email, X Zone at X Zone Radio TV.com on all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, Channel 57 on Simultv.com. And if you'd like more information on how you can actually subscribe to Simultv, go to www.simultv.com. Exonation, this is the Halloween season, no doubt. And our very first guest tonight is June Lundgren. And uh, June is a paranormal investigator who specializes in the removal of demons. Joining us now is June Lundgren. And uh, June, welcome to the Exxon. Oh, thanks for having me. Great seeing you, June. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you get started in the world of removing demons? Uh, it's quite an interesting story. All my life, I've been able to see demons and mm -hmm. understand. They speak in the Aramaic language. My brain is kind of hardwired to interpret it so I can see them in their true form, which is not how most humans see them. Most right. humans see them as like a shadow person or uh, a mass or smoke, something like that. I see them in their true form. And the reason for that was evident when I died and went to the other side back in 1988. I always knew that I was different, didn't know, you know, why I was different. And when I died in my motorcycle accident, I went to the other side and my grandparents were there and Michael, the archangel was there. And he says, you have to understand who and what you are. You're actually, your soul belongs to Ariel, the archangel. She's a demon slayer. And he said, your job is to remove demons in the physical world. And I had no idea who Ariel was. And there's not a lot of information mm -hmm. about her other than her name means uh, Lion of God. And she's one of the five that guard the throne of God. What people don't understand is she's a demon slayer as well as um, a member of the Legion of Light, which was created by God before the war between heaven and hell. And the, the Legion of Light is comprised of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Ariel. So when I went to the other side, I'm like, okay. And Michael says, you have to go back. You have to start doing what you're supposed to be doing in this lifetime. So when I went back and I was like, I had the clue, you know, I, hmm. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but I've never been afraid of them. But Michael said, you know, you, you're going to have to learn to deal with it so unfortunately for me uh they threw me into the fire so to speak my brother was having problems my sister-in-law called said he's you know his eyes are turning black and he's not himself you need to come down here and see if you can help me so i went down to their place and michael's like get out of the car he says, I want you to stand by the car and call the demon to you. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. And he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I said, you got my back, right? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we got your back. Mm, famous last words. I know, right? So I'm like, so I call the demon forward. And mm -hmm. it came through the wall of the house. And it got closer and closer. It was about arm's length away when all of a sudden my consciousness was like pushed to the back. And uh, Ariel came forward and um, she reached out and grabbed the demon by the throat and sliced its throat. And then she receded and my consciousness was back into the war. And I told Michael and Gabe, I said, you, you, you know, use me as bait. And what, why did you do that? Why didn't you tell me? 
And he's like, you needed to understand that she would always come forward in the presence of a demon. And she would always take care of it. I'm like, yeah, okay. But people tell me that when she comes forward, they see wings coming out of my shoulders. My eyes mm. turn white and my face changes and my voice changes. So there are physical manifestations associated with it. So what was it like being dead? It was quite interesting, actually. <laughs> you know, because you, you hear about, oh, you know, you go to the light, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And you do go through like a tunnel mm -hmm. to a lighted area. And that's where it was. It's hard for the human brain to comprehend. So your brain kind of tries to create an illusion or create a setting in your right. mind. And for me, it was there were clouds everywhere. And you're walking on the clouds. And Michael took me by the hand and said, you know, you need to he says, look down upon the earth and a bay window appeared and there were, I could see every soul, every person that was alive. And there were strings coming up from, from their head up to where we were. And he said, you see the light, the lights, the ones that are lit up. And I'm like, yeah, he said, those are the ones who've made the soul connection. Ones where the string is dark. They haven't made that connection yet. And I'm like, okay. And I said, well, if heaven is real, what about, you know, what about hell? hell? Yeah. And he took my hand again and we walked a few steps and he waved his arm and this big pit opened up and it was like a tar pit. You know, you could see people reaching up and screaming and in pain and wanting help. And then he closed it again. And he, I said, okay, I get it. It's real too. Did you ever ask yourself, why me? Why was I chosen for this? <laughs> yeah, because nobody in their right mind wants to do this job. But Michael explained it in this way. He said, your body, your physical body was created to house the soul of Ariel. You're basically the, the shell. But you have your own feelings, your own thoughts, everything like that. He says, but when... I was on the other side, he merged our consciousness so I can see what she sees, hear what she hears, and feel what she feels, which is, it makes it easier. I know mm -hmm. when something's coming, something negative's coming, like, I don't know, years or months in advance when it's coming. Um, how did this affect the way that you saw life? this near death and experience and, and did it change your religious uh, beliefs? Um, well, it, it affected me in the way that it, it validated everything okay. that I believed. And my grandmother who raised me, my maternal grandmother, she was a psychic medium and she was, she wasn't really quote unquote religious. She was spiritual. And that's how I am. Religion is man-made, you know, right. And I talked to God and he says, you know, I prefer people to be spiritual. Religion is man-made. It's man's way of putting a square peg in a round hole. But it, it forced me to see the good and the bad. And that I, you know, I've always been able to see things, but they are much clearer once I went to the other side and came back. I could see demons in people. I could see demons, you know, that were attached to people, you know, that were, you know, watching them, you know, it's, it was quite interesting. My life was never the same in that way. And it changed, it changed me as a person in the way that I've dedicated myself to doing this. So but, how did this, uh, how did this affect your family dynamics? Well, at the time, you know, I was single and, you know, uh, but I met my husband and he, he's very left brained. He's an auditor. So, you know, if you can't touch it, feel it, or see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, so he's learned, and we've been married now uh, 34 years. Oh, congratulations. And he's seen things that he never wants to see again, you know, being married to me. But I told him, I said, listen, this is what, I didn't tell him until I was like eight months pregnant. I said, listen, this is what I do. This is what I can see. And... 
what's growing inside of me will probably be able to see things too. And he, at first, I don't think he believed it. He's like, okay, whatever, you know. And Yes, dear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but over the years, <laughs> he's seen he's seen demons he's seen shadow people and you don't want to have anything to do with it <laughs> earlier you said that uh i believe it was the first time where an ariel came into you to slay the um slay the demon what did the demon look like demons are quite interesting this was an old demon old demons are like about they look a lot like archangels in the way that they're seven feet tall they have a 12 foot wingspan and that's where that's where the similarities stop because the demons are kind of an onyx color with shades of deep gray and facial features are almost non-existent except the eyes. Old demons have yellow or gold eyes and the younger demons have red eyes and so do the minions. The minions have red eyes as well. So there it's quite different. Um, the minions can appear as as little creepy crawly things. They can appear as whatever they put into your brain. But I see them as, you know, they look like miniature pigs. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. it looks like miniature pigs. But see, demons have the ability to reach into your brain, pull out your preconceived idea of what they should look like your preconceived image, and they put that into your brain and they amplify it a hundredfold. That's, that's how they work. All right, June, uh, please stand by. You and I have to take a break. Explanation, June Lundgren is our special guest. Her website is mysticconnections.org, and uh, she has a new book that has just come out. It's called Demon Seer, The Awakening. It's available at Amazon and fine online bookstores everywhere in print or e format. I'll be back as we... I was going to say, as um, now nah, we'll skip the Halloween stuff until a little later on. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. And welcome back, everyone. Before we went to the break, I was going to say the devil made me do it. Then I figured, no, nah, not yet. But I figured, well, I came back from the break. Why not? June Lundgren is our special guest, mysticconnections.org. And maybe we should start by defining what a demon is, June. A demon is an entity, a, a soul that has is unable to take physical form. It has never had physical form. And it's unable to do it. it. Not that it really wants to take physical form. It would rather just, you know, possess a human for a few minutes or whatever and and uh, 
make them as miserable as possible. But they will, they've, and they live in the dark realm. And over the years, they've learned to make their way into the physical world and cause a lot of problems. But, you know, you'd have to go back to like the war between heaven and hell, because at one time we were all of the light. And there arose a division between uh, Lucifer and God. Lucifer, mm -hmm. uh, there were, we travel. we used to travel the, the, all the galaxies, learning everything, seeing everything. And one day we decided, you know what? We're tired of this. We're pure energy. We'd like to have physical form again. We'd like to know love. We'd like to know, you know, having a child, the whole nine yards. And Lucifer and his followers said, no, that's not what we want. We do not want to be subject to pain, disease, growing old, a physical shell where we cannot just up and go when we want to come and go. So that started the war. And when it ended, Michael had disarmed Lucifer and Ariel had disarmed his son. And God said, you know what? You can't live among us anymore. You just can't do it. I'm going, so he opened up a rift into a dark realm and he put Lucifer and all of his followers in there and said, this is where you'll live now. This is where you'll exist. It, it, why didn't God just get rid of Lucifer and the other bad guys? Why did he allow them to continue? He was too, from my point of view, he was too lenient. And Lucifer had argued that he was too lenient. That was one of the things that uh, Lucifer had against God was that he was forgiving and that he was too lenient and he was and and he put him in there and and over the years they found ways to cause a lot of problems to physical beings because each physical being holds a white light soul mm -hmm. so is there only one type of demon or are there multiple types of demons there's different categories for demons. Um, I categorize them as the old demons. The old demons are the ones that uh, have been around for a long, long time. They uh, are very smart, very mm -hmm. intelligent, very crafty, uh, very nasty, and very tenacious. Then there are the um, lesser demons, what I call the lesser demons. Uh, they're kind of like hormonal teenagers. They're all about creating chaos in the physical world and as much harm and damage as they can, possibly can. And then there are like the minions, which are like shadow people, um, you know, the creepy crawly dudes. Creepy crawly <laughs> like, dudes. Yeah. And then there are what I call the wild cards, the, the harpies. You know, they're, they're a pain. You don't hey, see them too often. All right, you said creepy crawly dudes. How would you describe a creepy crawly dude? Well, they're the ones, it's the best way to describe it is, like, say the lesser demon is the pimp, <laughs> and the creepy crawly dudes go and look for victims. And they can appear to people as, like, thin, you know, tall, skinny, thin people, you know, mm -hmm. creatures uh, they can crawl on the ceilings they can crawl on the walls the floor they can come up into the ground and come out of the walls uh, they can look like a giant spider they can look like a pig they can look like just a ball of black goo it's depending upon whatever it takes to make you fear them more Okay, so the creepy crawly dudes are basically the people who go and find the victims for the demons? Exactly. Gotcha. Yep. Now, you mentioned a shadow person. What is a shadow person? We've, we're hearing a lot of that lately. Yeah, yeah. There's there's been an increase in the amount of demons in the world because they're getting more and more desperate. Uh, shadow person is like a minion. It It is demonic in nature, but unlike demons, demons travel in packs. They always do. Where you find one, you'll find creepy crawlies with them or whatever. But uh, shadow people like their own territory. It's unusual to find more than one in a location. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, like I said, that's they're usually fighting because they don't want anybody else in their territory. That includes other demons. 
it's just they're just not happy. They have a tendency to uh, cause you know go into a person's mind, cause them to have nightmares so they don't sleep. They wear them down. They can even drain their life force out of them. They can even stop your heart. Wow. Um. So, to protect oneself, does holy water work? Does a crucifix in the house work? And if you're being chased by a demon, if you ran into a church, would that stop the demon? Okay, if you're being chased by a demon and you run into a church, not really. It's a myth when they say that, you know, demons can't go on hollow ground. But that's that's not true. They can, and they do, no way. unfortunately. But the best way to protect yourself is there are several ways that can ward them off. And one of them is, you know, sealing your home with holy water, you know, above the windows and doors right. and things like that. Uh, then there is uh, anointing oil. You can use anointing oil that's blessed to do the same thing. You can wear, wear or use a crucifix, but it must have the image of Jesus on it because a plain cross is not going to cut it. You know, they don't care about that. And invoking the name of Jesus Christ and God, uh, that helps to ward them off as well. Uh, years ago, when I started removing demons, Michael and, and uh, God gave me a recipe for a special black salt. I had never even heard of black salt before then. But they, each, in each ingredient in the black salt mix that I make is uh, blessed by God. And it is... Uh, purified and some of Ariel's energy goes into it. So in the 40 years I've been making it, it's never failed mm -hmm. to protect. Uh, I have a sister group of ghosts and girls in the UK and they wear ne er, um, cremation necklaces with the black salt in them. And the black salt heats up in the presence of a negative entity and it protects. Interesting. So, so what's it like to speak to God and, does he speak back to you? Oh, yeah. It's all done te telepathically. Oh, I see. I remember when I went to the other side and and I could feel him there. It was it was strange in the way that it's like when you get there, it's like you can hear mm -hmm. every single soul that there is in existence. And, but it's more like a murmur in the background. But over all of this, you feel that connection with God and you can he's ever present there in the background. And we're all connected to him. Uh, and the best way to do it is say it is that we're all connected to him by uh, uh, a single thread of energy. And he's quite interesting. He's, I guess he would be. Yeah, he's, um, how I see him is how he, perce how he wants me to perceive him, I'm sure, is in, he's in energy form. And the energy form has kind of a, a human type structure to it. But when he reaches out a hand, uh, it's it can grow, you know, it's energy. So it reaches out in the shape of a hand, but it's it's just like <laughs> it's kind of it's strange, but it's there's always that ever present love there mm -hmm. and sense of uh, security and safety. And he has a lot of things to say. You know, he's been around a long time. So it's quite interesting. How do you as a mortal kill a demon? As a physical person, I cannot do it. But Ariel takes, Ariel is within me. And when she comes forward, she's in a whole different dimension, a whole different plane of existence. So she can fight them on their plane of existence. She creates a sword, a white light sword. And she does battle. It's like, the old days with the swords, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and she slices their head off. So let me ask you this. If she is fighting this fight in a different dimension, mm -hmm. why does she need you? Because I'm the vessel that she has to go back to. And... But, it, but are you taken to the different dimension, or is this all? Oh, yeah. yeah, I can see here, and I know exactly what's happening. In mm -hmm. one battle, Ariel got Ariel got wounded in the leg, and when I came out of the trance, my leg hurt for like days afterwards, right where she got wounded. 
Mm. So it's like how, I'm right there with her, a part of her. How can a demon hurt an angel? It can. It can. How? It can wound an angel with a sword, a black sword, a black energy sword. But it heals okay. right away. It heals like almost instantaneously. But that's the only time I've ever known her to get wounded. So how many of these demonic uh, executions have you partaked in? In this lifetime? Yeah. Used to be we would send them back to the dark realm. But over the last 10 years, God's become tired of their interference. And so he's given permission for the archangels to kill them. So yeah. a couple thousand at least. Couple thousand. Yeah. Wow, that, that's a lot. Um, yeah. And you said this life. How many lives have you had where you've been a, a demon slayer? This is life number 131. Ariel, we're, we're, Ariel yeah. would not be here if she didn't have to be. In 1198 AD, Michael showed me visually what happened. She, There was a woman that cried out for help to God. Mm -hmm because she was possessed by a demon. And so God sent Ariel down and Ariel got there and the demon came forward in the woman. And Ariel knew that the woman had summoned the demon. And so what she did was she just reached into the woman's body and ripped the demon out and the physical body died. And God was upset about that. And he said, you know, when she, he called her to him and said, you have no compassion for mankind. You have no care for them. And she argued with them and said, this woman, you know, summoned the demon and she calls on us to remove it. And she was the one who summoned it in mm -hmm. the first place. He says, look what they do to each other. They kill each other. You know, yeah. they have no respect for one another. But God wasn't hearing it. So he, he gave judgment that she would go back and live physical lives until she learned to have compassion for mankind. So she's finally learned after 131 lifetimes. So, so tell me, um, do you ever get tired of all this killing and all this work that God or somebody puts you through? Uh, there are days when, you know, like recently when I'm working 106 hours every two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it gets me after a while. But I set aside a day for my family and I set aside a day for helping people with their demon problems. Speaking about demons, you and I have to take a break. All right. XO Nation Jane, <laughs> I'm sorry, June Lundgren is her special guest. Mysticconnections.org is her website. And she has a new book out that's available at Amazon.com in print or e-form. And it is Demon Seer, The Awakening. This is the XO. I am Rob McConnell. We'll be back after this break. <laughs> So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about demon, uh, demonic possession, demons, and um, 
our, our guest this hour has been has been fighting demons for 131 lifetimes claims to have killed or killed several thousand demons just in this lifetime alone her name is june lundgren her website is mysticconnections.org uh, june how, how can you know if someone is possessed i can actually see the demon mm -hmm. within the individual if i get a picture i can see what's there and i once i see what's there then i do the removal all right but let's say so let's say somebody tonight is listening and they think that someone in that they know or maybe a member of their own family is possessed what would this person who they believe to be possessed act like would they change their looks? Would they change their attitude? Would they change their lifestyle? Some of the things that happen when a demon is attached or possessed mm -hmm. or a person is possessed by them is they, your life starts to tailspin out of control. Your finances go in the toilet. Your um, relationships, they try to isolate the individual, get them away from their support system. So that and they'll talk to them in their head all the time and they'll say, No one can help you. You know, you're you're no one can help you, nobody wants to help you. I'll kill your if you're close to your like if you have children or an animal or something, they're, they're all the time telling them they're gonna kill their, you know, their children or their mother or whatever. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they just completely they try to brainwash you basically. Your health starts going downhill as well. And you just become isolated. If if it's a full possession, which is rare to have a full possession, usually they're in and out. Then, you know, your, their eyes turn black. You know, you start speaking in Aramaic. Your um, whole personality changes. It's, and you become violent and depressed and not sleeping. Well, well, how do you how do you differentiate between? a demonic possession and a person who has mental problems, mental issues. That's see, that's the difficult part, but a lot of a a lot of what attracts a demon to an individual mm -hmm. can be substance abuse. It can be um, physical abuse that you've endured. It can also be mental illness mm -hmm. and mental illness presents itself in a certain way. Uh, demonic possession is different. You have the, you know, you have the superhuman strength. You have the eyes that turn black. I mean, if you have right. mental illness, that's not going to happen. You know, in some cases, it's levitation. Like I said, some people speak Aramaic, you know, because the demons are speaking through them. So none of that would be a mental, it would be happen in mental illness. Why do the demons speak Aramaic? It's the old language. They have a separate language that's almost unintelligible, mm -hmm. but they choose the old language, the old uh, Aramaic, because it's well, they consider it more affluent. If you like, I have a Bible that's done in Aramaic, and I have one that's done in you know the King James version, and there's a lot of things that were taken out of the Aramaic that and that were not put into the King James version. But they seem to like the old language, the dead languages, literally. Is there any place on this planet where demons do not thrive? If there is, I haven't found it yet. Mm -hmm. So take us through a, uh, um, somebody calls you up and they say, June, I've got somebody here that's possessed. I need your help. Come over here and exercise him. Get the demon out of here. What would you do? How would you handle that call? Well. I'll do it like I did. I went in on a case like that. I did a show called Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Mm -hmm. And one of the requests I got was a local woman that she said that she was possessed and she needed help right away. And I'm like, okay, send me a picture. So once she sent me the picture, then I knew what was there. And I have a friend of mine who's an ordained minister. And I have another friend who is the other half of my ghosts and girls paranormal. And I asked them if they'd like to go in on an mm -hmm. exorcism. 
Right. And, and I said, you have to prepare because this is like nothing that you've ever faced before. They'd never been in on one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told my friend that's the minister, I said, you fear the dark ones. I said, you cannot serve God and fear the dark ones. I said, this is why you need to come. So we, we get to the location, I knock on the door, and the woman opens it, and she's fully possessed. And she told me, get out, B, and slam the door. My friends are looking at each other like, what? <laughs> ah. So I, I said, don't worry about it, it's just a demon. Knock on the door, go back in. It took almost three hours to do it. It usually doesn't take that long. But there were 11 entities within this woman. Okay, and, when you when you say it took eleven uh, three hours to do this because there were eleven entities, three hours to do what? To remove all of them, to kill, to get them out of her and kill them. At one point, we got to the last entity, mm -hmm. and I can look into their mind to see why they're there and how they got there. And I looked into this one's mind; it wasn't wanting to come out and i said well if you want to go back to the light i said i can ask jesus if he will come and take you back to the light if you truly want to go home and he's in he didn't believe me i said i can ask him so i asked jesus i said come forth so my friends are standing in front of me and they part as this huge hand comes they both saw it come out towards the woman Mm -hmm. and the demon, well, he almost took the hand, and then at the last minute he said, no, 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 you're lying, you're lying, and he went back inside the woman, and Jesus withdrew. I said, so be it. I said, the reason you're hiding out in this woman is because you were given a job to do by Lucifer, and you just didn't bother to do it. I said, and he's been looking for you. So I simply said, Lucifer, come forth. And my friend saw this entity appear, suddenly appear at the end of the hallway and start walking towards us, towards where we were. To my friends, what they saw was a black figure in like a fedora, a double-breasted suit, some, something from, you know, the 20s, 30s. Mm -hmm. and, the, and Lucifer came down and he told the demon, you know, come out of there you're coming with me and the demon refused to leave and lucifer turned and looked at me and said you know i know you don't want me to hurt the the physical body the woman so i will be back later tonight to remove it and he walked he turned around and walked down the hall and disappeared so we all left that we all left and every one of us woke up at 3 a.m in our respective beds and heard it's done. And I called the woman the next day and she says, it's been 20 years and she felt free of them. And she was free. I told her, get some help. You have PTSD, get psychological help, please. Get All right, stand help. by June. We've got to take our final break. Exxon Nation, June Lundgren is our special guest. MysticConnections.org. We'll be back as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away.
And we're back with June Lundgren. Uh, we're talking about demons this hour here in the Exxon. Her website is www.mysticconnections.org. Um, after you've fought these demons for 131 lives, um, if reincarnation is real, why do you want to come back and do this over and over and over and over again? She was she was made to come back. She didn't want to come back. Uh, uh, she had to you, be. God said you have to come back until you learn to have compassion. Okay, so you are she, mm -hmm. and and still over a hundred and thirty one year lifetimes you didn't learn this. She hasn't until this lifetime. I never said she wasn't stubborn. <laughs> uh, um, Angels have their own. Every angel has its own personality, and she's very, very stubborn. What's the angel's name? Ariel. A-U-R-I-E-L. Okay, so you are Angel Ariel? Mm-hmm. Archangel Ariel, yeah. How can you prove that? Other than the fact that when she comes forward, there are physical manifestations. And How? Uh, people see wings coming out of my shoulders and my eyes turn white, my voice changes and I look about 20 years old. Okay. Um, so and I'm, I I'm having a bit them. of a problem understanding this because if you are her and you've lived 131 lifetimes, mm -hmm. why does she have to come in you? Because if you're her, why does she have to make an entrance why can't you just do it without her if you are her she always her soul resides within me so she's always constantly there so i'm the vessel that holds the soul and i i enable her to find the demons in the physical world because a lot of because demons cannot see past the external uh the external picture of what a person is they do not look any deeper if they look deeper, they would see her within me, but they don't. They're like a lot of people. They look, they judge by the outside. They don't look any deeper than that. And that gives me the advantage. So what happens if she being you does not get the amount of, uh, what did you call it? Uh, affection that is required to to fulfill her destiny through the grace of God. Do you come back 132nd time? Yeah, but she has um, she has learned this time, so she won't be back again. This is her last lifetime. God has told her, you know, you've learned, finally learned mm -hmm. to have compassion. And he compassion, said that. That's the word I was looking yeah, for. Yep. Yeah, and he said that all of, not only were you supposed to come back to learn compassion, but you're supposed to come back to learn how man has changed, how man thinks, so that we can understand man better. Because a lot of people think that, oh, angels know what I feel like, what I, how mm -hmm. I feel, and things like that. They don't understand that they haven't been physical, so they understand the concept of love, the concept of hate, the concept of you know, compassion, but they don't understand the feeling of it. And when Ariel comes back from each lifetime to the other side, she lets them, she basically lets them feel what she felt and what she went through in the lifetime so that they can have some idea of how man feels. Why do you separate yourself from her? You say when she comes back, Instead of saying when I come back, why the separation if in fact you are her? Because the body changes. She, when she comes back, a new body is created. And No, that's you know, not what I'm getting at. That's not what well, I'm getting at. That's not what I'm getting at. You say that you are Archangel Ariel. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So if you, when Arch, uh, when this is crazy. When you go back, when I go back to the and, other side, and to the other side, you say, when she, 
you don't reference it as yourself. And I'm wondering why you have a line of distinction between you and her if you are the person. Probably because the physical body doesn't return. Only, only the soul returns. Although my physical consciousness mm -hmm. is stored within her as well. All my experiences in this lifetime, she, you know, she keeps those. As well as the other 131 lifetimes? Right, right. They're all in there, yeah. All right, June, the time has come when you and I must say so long. Let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and where they can get your book. You can go to Amazon.com and you can get all of my books there. There are nine of them. Mm -hmm. And you can get a hold of me at, uh, at mysticconnections.org or demonseer.org. Com. Either one of those will get you to the same and you can connect with me there or you can um, go on Facebook under June Calrus Lundgren to get a hold of me. Yeah, either way, you just go to the contact page and let me know and send me an email and I'll help. All right, June, thanks very much for joining us. And Dexo Nation, once again, if you'd like to contact June, her website is mysticconnections.org. Now, are you connecting with June or are you connecting with Archangel Ariel? Still having a bit of a problem with that separation if one, if both are one and one are both, if you get my drift. I'll be back on the other side of this break at the top of the hour as the Exxon will then continue right here from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. 